June Aud 8, page 7, starting with question 36. The mass of a paper clip, approximately. Let's see, 1 times 10 to the 6 is 1 with 6 zeros. Yikes, that's a big paper clip. 1 times 10 to the 3, 1,000 kilograms. This is 1 times 10 to the negative 3, that's 0 0.001 kilograms, that's 1 gram. And uh, 0 0.00001 kilograms, and that's really tiny. So the closest one's about a gram. That would be choice three. Okay, question 37. The graph below represents the displacement of an object moving in a straight line. Keep in mind, displacement is how far it is from its start position. So let's look at this graph and figure out what's happening. All right, we started zero displacement, so that's our beginning point. We travel 8 meters away in 4 seconds. We stay at 8 meters for a while. And then we travel up to 16 meters away. And then we come backwards back to 8 meters away. So our displacement would be 8 meters from the rest position. What was the total distance traveled? Now distance means the entire path length. So let's think about this. We were 16 meters away for a while, and then we came backwards 8 meters, but that means we traveled an additional distance of 8 meters. So a total distance traveled would be about 24 meters. Let's see if that's one of the choices. Oh look, yes it is. 24 meters. That works. Question 38. Which diagram best represents the gravitational forces between a satellite and the Earth? Well, the forces would be equal. A satellite pulls on the Earth, the same force the Earth pulls on the satellite. Well, this is the satellite uh, experiencing a force towards Earth, and Earth force somewhere else. That doesn't make sense. Neither does that. This looks like the right answer. They're both attracting each other. And here are the satellites being pulled away from the Earth, so I'm going to go with this choice. Question 39. A block weighing 10 newtons, so weight is directed, directed towards the center of the Earth, 10 newtons, is on a ramp inclined at 30 degrees. That means part of its weight is pressing downwards on the ramp. And part of its weight is pressing this way. And we can build a right triangle to represent that. And if this is 30 degrees, and this is also 30 degrees right here. And so uh, the, uh, the total weight of 10 newtons times, let's see, that would be the opposite side of the triangle, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the component of the weight that's actually trying to move down the ramp. Sine of 30 is 0.5, so 5 newtons of the object's weight is trying to go down the ramp. You can, uh, you can remember that. If the object is uh, flat, then all of its weight is going this way. If the object's at 90 degrees, then all of its weight is going this way, because it's at some variation then it's the 0 to 90, or the sine of the angle. So there's a total downward force of 5, 6, 7, 8 newtons going here. There's uh, 3 newtons of friction going down right there. And it's being pulled up at a constant velocity. Constant velocity means that the net force is 0. There's no acceleration. And so, uh, which is parallel to the ramp. What's the magnitude of the force pulling it up? Well, I've got a total of 8 newtons pulling it down. So I'm going to need a total of 8 newtons pulling it up in order for it not to accelerate. And I've got uh, 8 newtons right here. There you go. And question 40. 
a 25 Newton horizontal force northward. Horizontal. Okay, so you're looking from the above, and I've got 25 Newtons pulling it northwards. And a 35 Newton horizontal force southwards. Act concurrently, which means at the same time, on a 15 kilogram object. So the mass is 15 kilograms. And a frictionless surface. What is the magnitude of the object's acceleration? Well, the net force is going to be 25 north, 35 south, 10 newtons south. And we want acceleration. Well, acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. So 10 newtons divided by 15 kilograms is going to be uh, something less than 1. And if we look at our choices, you can obviously get your calculator out and figure it out, but I bet you that will be the answer.